Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to two new enhancements for the preview in Xcode. One is the new previewable map role, and the other is the preview modifier. I'll show you how you can use both to greatly simplify your code and throw in little Swift data as well. I love getting your feedback, so if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Make sure you ring the bell to enable notifications and get notified whenever a new video is released. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. A link is in the description. There is a starter project for this video and you can download it from the link in the description. There are two branches, so make sure you download the starter project branch for this project as it has the starter resources. The completed project branch contains the completed source code for the video. Just download and expand the zipped archive. The project does require Xcode 16, and at the time of this recording, I'm running Xcode Beta 6. Now the starter project is pretty minimal. There is a person model that conforms to the identifiable protocol, so it has an ID property along with two string properties, first name and last name. There's also a static array of person called people that contains 10 persons in the array. The opening screen, the people list view, has a state property called people that is assigned to the static people array and uses a navigation stack to display a list of these people as navigation links that passes in the single person to a person view when tapped. Now that person view for now just displays the first and last names. And since it's being pushed onto the navigation stack, I have a navigation title displaying the two names joined together with a space. And it sets the navigation bar title mode to inline. Unfortunately though, you can't see that in this view, but we can see it if we return to the people list view and tap on one of those rows. Well, in the past, in the preview for the person view, I'd simply embed the view in a navigation stack. But what I'm going to do instead is to show you how you can use a preview modifier to do this. A preview modifier is new in Xcode 16, and conforming types can define shared contexts that will be cached by the preview system and then reused across the participating previews. And we'll get to that shortly. They can also act as a kind of a view modifier instead. And these can be assigned as preview traits, which were introduced last year. So I want to create a preview modifier. So first, let's create a new empty file. And we'll call it preview modifiers. I'll import Swift UI. And then I'll create a struct called nav embedded that conforms to the preview modifier protocol. Xcode will complain that it doesn't conform to the protocol, and like view modifiers, it requires a body function. This body function receives content and a context, and then returns some view. Well, we're not going to be using the context here in this case, so I'm just going to supply void and then return the content in the body. Well, currently this will do nothing to that preview content. What we want to do though, is to wrap that content in a navigation stack. So now I could return to person view and in the preview, I can add a traits argument. And here I'll specify that we'll have a modifier that is the nav embedded struct. And you'll see we get the inline navigation title displayed in the preview, and it's inline, as I said. Well, we can make this even swiftier or easier to use, like view modifiers. We can create an extension, but this time we'll create an extension on preview trait. So back in our preview modifiers file, I'm gonna create an extension to preview trait where the generic T is equal to the preview dot view traits. And then in the body, I can create a static variable that I'll just call nav embedded lowercase. 
which is of type self, and set it equal to the dot modifier, passing in our nav embedded preview modifier. I can then return to person view, and I can change that trait to just be dot nav embedded. Now I want to make person view one where we can update the user's name. So this means that we'll need to change the person from a let to a binding. The preview complains because it can't convert our samples person to a binding. In the past, we either changed this to a constant, like I'm doing here, or we created a different view in our preview to handle this. Well, in Xcode 16, this has changed now with the introduction of a new previewable macro. This person object is being passed in as a state variable. So what we can do is create a state variable in the preview. This person object is being passed in as a state variable. So what we can do is create a state variable in the preview and assign a particular person from our static array, but annotate it with the previewable macro. Make sure though that you don't create your state property in the preview as a private property. Can't be private. Let's clear up any errors by going back to the person list view here and changing our list to a binding of people. And then we'll also have to change the iterator to a binding so that we can pass into our person view the binding of person. With that in place now, we can return to person view. I'll change the vStack to a form. And then I'm going to change each of our text views to text fields that will be bound to the person's corresponding property. With that done, in the person view, I can edit one of the text fields and see that the navigation title updates. And if I return to the people list view, I can tap on one of the rows and it passes in the person as a binding so that I can edit it in the person view. And when I return back to the list, I see that it's changed. Remember when we created our nav embedded trait, we ignored the context property and made it void? What I'd like to do though, is to finish the video off by showing you how this can become very handy if instead of that struct for our people, we use a model that saves the data using Swift data. Now I have an entire series on Swift data. So if you're not familiar with that, please check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. So bear with me as I convert this project to use Swift data. It's actually very simple. In the person model, I want to change that to a Swift data model. So this will require that I import Swift data. Next, I can change the struct to a class and annotate it with the at model attribute. Well, the Swift data models conform to the identifiable protocol by default. So we can remove that conformance and the ID property as well. And since this is a class, we lose the memberwise initializer, so I'll have to create an initializer for our two first name and last name variables. Now I can't use this static people array anymore, but I will be using some of the content, so let's just comment that out for now. In the file where the app is launched, where app main is, we can import Swift data. To set up our app for Swift data, we'll need to apply the model container to our primary view using the model container modifier for the person type, so person.self. And then in people list view, we can no longer use the state property, but we can use Swift data to fetch all of the person objects using a query. Now initially there won't be any, but we'll fix that in a minute. So first we'll import Swift data, and then I'm going to change that state property to a query that will get us that array of person objects. And while we're at it, let's sort them using the key path for the person last name. 
and that will give us a private variable that we'll call people that will be that array of person. And we can remove the dollar from our list as we'll be using a bindable Swift data object. Over in person view, I'm going to change the person object then to a bindable object so that we can update that person that's coming in. The preview crashes, so I'm just going to comment it out for a minute and we'll get back to that shortly. I'm no longer showing any errors in my code, but I'm also not seeing any preview data in my list and certainly not any preview in the person view because I've commented that out. As Swift Data stores its objects in a SQLite database on the device, what we can do is we can create an in-memory version of our previews and provide it with some mock data that we can use in all of our views. Let's return to our preview modifiers file. And since I'm going to be working with Swift Data, I'm going to import Swift Data. And I'm going to create a new preview modifier. So I'll create a struct called mock data that conforms to the preview modifier protocol. Now I'll have to add the required body function. And for now, to stop the error, I'm going to set that context to void. We'll come back and replace that in a minute. It's this context that we want to create. And that is a Swift data context. Well, there's a function for the preview modifier that's a static function that's called make shared context. It's an asynchronous function that can throw and it can return what we want to have it return, which is a model container. In the body then, we can create a container by trying to create a model container for person.self, just as we did in our app launch location, but we'll also specify configurations using a model configuration where the is stored in memory only property is set to true. And then we can return that container. But we can change the context now to be this model container type that is made from the make shared context function. But before we return it, we want our containers main context function to insert some mock data. Well, we've got some mock data that we commented out. So let's return to where we commented out the code for that static array, and then just copy the creation of those objects. And then we'll paste them into the make shared context function before the return. Now, these aren't Swift data objects. So let's first uncomment these. And then if you click in front of the first person object and then hold down the option and shift keys, you can drag down to create multiple cursors. And now in order to insert these into the Swift data context, we can use the containers dot main context to insert the object. So we'll have to use our left parentheses. And then we can use a command right arrow to get to the end of each line and then press backspace to remove the comma and then enter the closing parentheses. Now we removed one of the parentheses for that lost object, so let's add it back. And then we can create a preview trait extension just as we did before. So I'm just going to copy the previous one and I'm just going to change it so that our preview extension will be called mock data and its modifier we'll call the mock data preview modifier. And there's one more thing that I forgot, and this is really important. In our preview modifier, we must apply a model container modifier to our content and we'll pass in that model container that we just created, which is the context that's coming in. Well, I can return now to the people list view and add the mock data static property as a trait for the preview. You'll see as soon as we do that, we get our data list sorted alphabetically by last name. Perfect. So now let's move on to 
person view. So in person view, let's import Swift data because I forgot to do that originally. And I can uncomment the preview now. And here I can add a second trait simply by adding a comma. And then that second trait is going to be the mock data. Well, now that the preview knows about the mock data, we can change the previewable property to a query that will fetch the entire array of person, which will be our mock data. And that's going to be the same query that we used in the person list view without the private designation. And then I can simply pick one of them by index to pass into the person view. So how about people at the zero index, the first one? And there we have it. Your Swift data models are now in memory for the preview, and you have access to all of your mock data. And you can reuse this mock data trait in any view that you need to, to display any of your Swift data content. Well, that's it for this video. And I hope that you have learned something new that you can use in your own projects going forward. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and enable notifications so that you're made aware of new videos that I release. And you can also download my free channel listing app to be able to search for and find content from any one of my over 300 Swift and SwiftUI related videos. Thanks for watching.